Hello, everyone, and it's Susan Thornton here with the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. Welcome to our second in our video series with our friends at CRISPR Therapeutics. And today we have with us Dr. P.K. Morrow, who is the Chief Medical Officer of CRISPR Therapeutics. Welcome, Dr. Morrow, and thanks for joining us. Hi, Susan. I'm really delighted to discuss CRISPR Therapeutics research and allogeneic CAR T cell therapy with you today. I am, as Susan alluded to, the Chief Medical Officer for CRISPR Therapeutics, and I'm also an oncologist. CRISPR Therapeutics is a biopharmaceutical company that's really focused on creating transformative gene-based therapy for serious diseases using our proprietary CRISPR-Cas9 platform. CRISPR-Cas9 is a revolutionary gene editing technology that allows for precise directed changes to genomic DNA. Our company has established a portfolio of therapeutic programs across a broad range of disease areas, which include hemoglobinopathies, oncology, regenerative medicine, and rare diseases. All of CRISPR therapeutics therapies are investigational, and we are currently studying them in clinical trials. This means that the therapies that CRISPR Therapeutics is investigating are not approved yet by the FDA, nor by any other country's health authorities at this stage, and safety and efficacy has not been established. Great, and I just wanna also mention, um, again, this is the second in our series with CRISPR Therapeutics, and we talked a little bit about the CRISPR-Cas9 um, in our previous video. So if you haven't watched that one, I encourage you to go back and watch that one. But today we're going to talk about, specifically about CRISPR therapeutics research in allogeneic CAR T cell therapy, which is a brand new approach to dealing with um, aggressive forms of cancer. And Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about CRISPR therapeutics, go back and watch the first video. And today, um, you know, in the last conversation, we learned that CRISPR therapeutics is evaluating the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, which is very interesting and a little bit of a tongue twister. And that's designed to develop an investigational allogeneic CAR T cell therapy. And we're gonna learn more about that today, but to start at a very high level, Dr. Morrow, can you kind of set the ground for folks to talk a little bit about what is CAR T cell therapy and what, um, so we can all start from the same place. Thanks, Susan, I appreciate it, and absolutely. So let's first talk about T cells, which are the T in the CAR T term. A T cell is a type of blood cell that's really integral to the immune system. It finds and it attacks other cells that shouldn't be in the body, such as a cancer cell. So in CAR T cell therapy, the T cell is modified to express chimeric antigen receptors, or CAR, which target a specific protein on the surface of the cancer cell. The receptor then acts like a key, which is in search of a lock, which is the protein on the cancer cell. So once the key engages with the lock, the CAR T can then act upon the cancer cell. So to date, the CAR T cell therapies that have been approved by regulatory agencies for the treatment of certain types of cancer have been autologous, which means they use a person's own T cells to create the CAR T therapy. CRISPR Therapeutics is researching an allogeneic approach, which uses healthy donor T cells. We have a short video clip that helps to illustrate these concepts. Understanding CAR T cell therapy. This information is for educational purposes only. Some autologous CAR T cell therapies have been approved for the treatment of specific types of cancer by health authorities. Others are still being studied in clinical trials. Allogeneic CAR T therapy is still being studied and is considered investigational. Its safety and efficacy have not been established. What is a CAR T cell? Before we learn what a CAR T cell is, let's talk about T cells. T cells are a type of immune system cell used to make CAR T cells. T cells find and kill cells that may be infected by a virus or cells that should not be in the body, such as cancer cells. 
receptors on the surface of the T cell help it bind to other cells. Proteins which define a cell's structure and function are often the targets of receptors. When researchers develop CAR-T therapies, they modify the DNA of the T cell so that the T cell expresses chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, on its surface. A CAR is like a key that fits a specific lock, such as a protein, on the surface of another cell. How are CAR T cells designed to work? When a CAR T cell meets a cancer cell that has the specific protein or lock on its surface, the CAR T cell can bind to it to attack the cancer cell. How are CAR T cells made? To create CAR T cells, scientists add the CAR in a laboratory, which can take three to four weeks. Scientists create CAR T cells using either autologous or allogeneic T cells. Autologous CAR T cell therapy uses T cells that are collected from the patient and shipped to a laboratory. Once ready, the patient receives a short course of chemotherapy, which makes room in their body for the CAR T cells. Allogeneic CAR T cell therapy uses T cells from a healthy donor. Once again, T cells from the donor are shipped to a laboratory. The CAR T cells need to be modified to be accepted by the patient's body. Since allogeneic CAR T cells can be made in advance, they are quickly sent to the hospital upon request and given to the patient after a short course of chemotherapy, which makes room in the body for the CAR T cells. Talk to your healthcare provider and visit clinicaltrials.gov to learn more. Wow, thanks for sharing that video. I, I think when you have visuals, it makes the uh, very complex um, <laughs> d uh, topic much easier to understand. And I think especially because the whole CAR T, it's, it's a hot topic, but to really dive in and understand what it is and why it's so new and different is so important. And being able to see it visually, I think makes it crisper, at least in my mind. Um, and one of the exciting things from our perspective, because as you know, cutaneous lymphomas generally are T cell oriented and CAR T's using a patient's own cells uh, probably is not the best approach since it's the T cell itself that is in fact the cancer cell. So it's exciting, but maybe you can share a little bit about why research the allogeneic approach. Absolutely. So our allogeneic CAR T cell therapies are still investigational and we're in early clinical trials which means that the therapies that we're investigating are not approved yet by the FDA or any other country's health authorities at this stage, and we have not fully established safety and efficacy. As you alluded to, Susan, the allogeneic approach is really intended to, first of all, investigate more types of cancers, such as T-cell lymphoma, and it also is a type of therapy that can be manufactured and processed at any time and then frozen and stored. And that allows us for much greater flexibility in the use for these targeted cancers. So in allogeneic CAR T cell therapy, the cells that are used are healthy cells from a donor, whereas in autologous CAR T therapy, the patient cells have been potentially treated with chemotherapy and or radiotherapy and then are leveraged to make the autologous CAR T. For us, after screening and approval, the patient wait time is anticipated to be approximately one to two weeks before start of therapy for allogeneic CAR-T, as opposed to a bit longer with autologous CAR-T, which is usually four to six weeks of wait time. Well, that sounds very, very exciting. And I know it's very early on, but from our perspective in the T-cell lymphoma world, it brings this new technology as a potential in the future for our patients who are really um, looking for this kind of therapy. So 
maybe just a little bit about, again, it's still new or still early on, but where can our patient community learn more about um, this type of therapeutics and CRISPR therapeutics and what you're doing? Absolutely. So first of all, um, you know, I, I wanted just to bring up the fact that our trials currently are in the phase one to phase two. Phase one is where you are establishing the safety and the dose and pharmacokinetics of the therapy. Phase two and phase three are when we begin to confirm the efficacy as well as the potential for this therapy to be a part of the treatment portfolio for patients. And so in order to more, learn more, um, we would advise the patient um, to talk to their doctor about their specific situation and whether a trial could potentially be an option for them. Great, great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Morrow, for sharing this. I think it gives our patient community a, a little better understanding of CAR-T therapeutics and then also the differences between an autogalous and an allogeneic um, version and what CRISPR therapeutics is working on. And I'll just share also that uh, we have listings of the clinical trial sites that are open on our website. And of course, you can go out to clinicaltrials.gov, which houses all the clinical trials if you're interested in learning more. And of course, speak to your physician and talk about uh, whether or not this might be an option for you. So thank you so much, Dr. Morrow. And we have another uh, video in this series that will talk a little bit more specifically about the CRISPR therapeutics clinical trials. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Dr. Morrow, for joining us today. Thank you.